Hello and welcome back to the Microlearning Institute. In this short tutorial we look at the area of managing conflict and specifically we look at the model developed by Thomas and Kilman in this regard. Thomas and Kilman identified five conflict handling modes and visually this model is presented as follows. So here we can see Thomas and Kilman's model where on the x-axis he talks about the cooperativeness and we can that, that, that operates on a range from on the extreme left from being uncooperative, uncooperative to on the right to being very cooperative. The y-axis here is what's referred to as assertiveness and again the lower end of this axis is where we want to be unassertive and the higher end of this axis on the top left hand corner is assertive and Thomas and Kilman identified five approaches to conflict handling from these two axes. The first one is top left hand corner where we want to be assertive and we're not that concerned about being cooperative. So our focus is on winning and Thomas Kilman referred to that approach to conflict management as a competing approach. So where our approach is or our desire is to win. Alternatively, uh, we could collaborate and this is where we want to be cooperative so we want to experience high levels of cooperation but we also want to be assertive so here we want to arrive at a win-win solution where we work with our colleagues or our contemporaries to collaborate and reach a win-win solution. The next conflict handling mode identified in this model is compromising or maybe looking to find a middle ground. So here we want to be pretty cooperative and also pretty assertive, but not too cooperative or too assertive. So here we're looking to find a middle ground and the mode is called compromising. The next conflict handling mode identified by Kilman, Thomas Kilman, is the avoiding approach. So here we're happy to delay the decision around resolving the conflict so that we can avoid the conflict. And here we're not particularly looking to be uh, cooperative, so we're being uncooperative and unassertive. And finally, where we want to be very cooperative and not very assertive, we can accommodate and the approach here is to yield, where we essentially yield to the, the desires of our, uh, our, our uh, colleagues and uh, accommodate their desires in resolving the conflict. Now, let's have a look at each of these uh, conflict handling modes in turn. So let's look first at competing. So you'll remember competing is where we want to be very assertive, but not very cooperative. So really the catchphrase for competing is, it's my way or the highway. It's my way or the highway. I don't want to be cooperative. I want to assert my way. So here, this is useful if we want to take quick action or if we need to make an unpopular decision or if we want to stand up for a vital issue or a vital principle or if we, if we need to protect ourselves. Skills that we will develop by exercising the competing approach is we'll be very strong at arguing or debating using our rank, using our position in the organization, or using our influence to compete, to make sure that we get our way. Um, to be able to assert our opinions and feelings is an important skill if we want to uh, apply, apply the competing approach to conflict management, and to be able to stand our ground and state our position very clearly. Next, let's look at the accommodating approach to conflict management. And here, of course, we see that this is where we want to be very cooperative but we don't want to be assertive. And here, essentially, what we're saying is, look, it'll be, it will be my pleasure. So whatever my colleague wants to do, it would be my pleasure to facilitate him or her. So here, we'll show a lot of reasonableness. reasonableness. We'll develop a performance in the future. We'll possibly create goodwill for future engagements with this colleague or these colleagues. And we'll also keep the peace because, of course, we're essentially accommodating the, to the desires of our colleagues. Uh, also, we, of course, will retreat from the uh, conflict situation and maintain perspective. Accommodating skills are foregoing your desires, so being able to abandon your own desires in favour of the desires of your colleagues, to be selfless, uh, to be obedient, and to show an ability to yield. Next, let's look at the avoiding approach to conflict uh, resolution. 
And again, avoiding is that we're not being particularly cooperative or not being particularly assertive, but we're yielding to the desires of our colleagues. Avoiding is, I'll think about that tomorrow. I'm going to delay any decision now and I'll think about it tomorrow. So here, what we benefit from is that we leave unimportant issues alone. We reduce tensions and we, we take the, the heat out of the conflict, uh, as we say. We buy some time as well, so maybe things will change or maybe our opinions will change or those of our colleagues will change. And we'll also accept our limitations about resolving the conflict now and maybe think about what we need to do to resolve it in the future. And also, we allow others to step in and take ownership of the, of the conflict and recognizing issues as symptoms. So the skills we need in order to exercise this avoiding approach is the skill of withdrawing from the conflict or sidestepping the conflict or saying this is not the right time to, to deal with this conflict. Maybe there's a better time at some stage in the future. And also it's a skill to be able to leave things unresolved, to say that we are not solving this now, but we may come back and solve it in the, in the future. Next, let's look at collaborating. So again, collaborating is where we want to be cooperative, but we also want to be assertive and reach what we've determined a win-win solution. So here our approach are two heads are better than one. So if we both engage, it, engage this conflict pretty robustly, we will come out with a win-win solution for everybody. So here we're looking to integrate solutions and make sure that the solution is multi-dimensional. We're keen to learn from our colleagues to understand their perspective so, and ensure that they understand our perspective so that we'll reach the best solution. Uh, we're keen to merge our uh, competing perspectives and also by engaging robustly with our colleagues we're hoping that, that we will gain th their commitment to the eventual solution and of course also they will gain our commitment to the eventual solution. So consequently, that should improve relationships across the organization. Skills needed to, to be able to collaborate, collaborate are an ability to listen and to understand and to empathize with somebody else's uh, position. To be able to exercise what we call non-threatening confrontation. So to be able to confront somebody, but not in a threatening fashion. To be able to analyze the various inputs and identify any underlying concerns. Now let's look at compromising, and again, compromising is that we're, we're, taking, we're trying to be of a medium level of cooperativeness and a medium level of assertiveness. So here we're saying, let's make a deal. Let, let's reach a middle ground as such. Okay? So, so here we're, uh, what we're doing is we're resolving issues that are of moderate importance, and we're reaching resolution with equal power and strong commitment. So we're creating temporary solutions to overcome problems today but maybe they're not fully solved and may come back in the future. So we're dealing with time constraints. You know, what we're really saying is if we had more time now, we would probably look to collaborate further on this, whereas we need to come up with a temporary solution so that we can move ahead with more important issues. So again, we're backing it. it this really backs up the competing or collaborating approach to conflict resolution. So the skills we need here are the skill of negotiating, of finding a middle ground which keeps everybody reasonably happy, of making concessions with respect to our own requirements, of assessing the value and saying, look, a small amount of effort will get us as far as here, but it would take substantially more effort to get us to the ideal solution. Now, let's look at overuse of each of these uh, approaches to conflict management. So overuse of the competing approach can lead to a lack of feedback because of course if you overly compete so that you always win then some of your colleagues will say there isn't really any point in uh, giving in providing feedback because the objective uh, of this individual is always to win we won't learn as much if we don't listen to feedback and our teams won't be as empowered because they won't feel that they have any control over the um, the conflict and the resolution of the conflict overuse of avoiding can result in a lack of input from yourself because of course you're avoiding the conflict. Decisions might often be made by default uh, and again a lot of issues might be allowed fester for the long term and it might create a climate of caution where there are lots of issues that remain unresolved. Overuse of compromising is that we might lose the big picture and just always look at reaching temporary solutions and that might result in a lack of trust and, and maybe a very cynical climate because really nothing is ever fully resolved. We're compromising on everything. Uh, an overuse of accommodating is that we might overlook some new ideas 
or we might have some restricted influence because we don't express our views uh, pretty robustly. There might be a loss of our contribution and that might lead potentially to, to, to anarchy. And an overuse of collaboration is, you know, that we can spend too much time on unimportant issues, that sometimes it's more important to say, look, let's reach an adequate solution rather than let's work together and resolve everything. There can be a lot of diffused responsibility and this can lead to people who take advantage and maybe some work overload for people because we're spending a lot of time collaborating to resolve every issue uh, fully. On the other hand, if we underuse competing, it can result in a restricted influence for us with respect to the decisions being made. It can result in indecision or delayed action or the withholding of contributions from others. If we, over, if we underuse avoiding, that can lead to hostility and or hurt feelings. It can lead to work overload and too many causes or a lack of prioritization and or delegation. If we underuse compromising, we can have frequent power struggles or an inability to negotiate effectively and perhaps some unnecessary confrontations. If we underuse accommodation, there can be a lack of rapport, it can result in low morale or a by the book reputation and an ability to yield. And finally, if we underuse collaborating, uh, we can, that can result in mutual gains deprivation, a lack of commitment by, by people to the final solution, low empowerment of people and a loss of innovation. Thank you very much for taking this time to watch this short tutorial from the Microlearning Institute in the area of conflict management.